Routing protocols. So we have many different routing protocols that we use to dynamically create these routes in our routing tables. We have interior protocols and exterior protocols. So interior gateway protocols operate within an autonomous system. So inside your networks that you own. Okay. When you start dealing with exterior gateway protocols, you start dealing with things that are operated between autonomous systems. So for instance, if I have a network on the left and the network on the right, the one on the left, that uh, 002 network might be John's network, and the one on the right might be um, Michelle's network. The gateway protocol, the exterior gateway protocol, would be what would connect the two of them together. So if you think of your small business and another person's small business, you're going to go through the internet to get to each other. That's when you break out of your own autonomous system to get into theirs. So the first way that we look at things is based on distance. So this is a distance vectoring protocol. It sends a full copy of the routing table to everyone who it's directly connected to. So in this ex particular example, we have 100 bits uh, transmission on A to C, B to D, and C to D. Up top, though, we have 128 kilobit connection, which is our serial. So here we have our CAT5 network, 100 uh, should be 100 base T, right? That's what we're talking about here. Sorry, not bits, but kilobits, or megabits per second. Up top, we have 128K, which will be our big bottleneck, okay? So when we deal with this, and we deal with distance vectoring, we have a very slow convergence time, because what we have to do is we have, the convergence time is the time it takes for all routers to update their routing tables with the information anytime there's a change in the topology, okay? With distance vectors, they send their entire routing table to everybody else he's connected to. To speed up your convergence, you can do what's called holding down the timers, which means instead of updating every 60 seconds, maybe you update every 180 seconds. So if you have three minutes in between updates, you'll, you'll be able to get to convergence quicker than every, every time you update every 30 seconds or 60 seconds, you're never going to get there. Um, and it uses what's called a hop count as the metric. The most popular distance vector protocol is RIP, okay, which is Router Information Protocol. Routing information protocol is an interior gateway protocol, and it is a distance vector one that uses hop count. The maximum number of hop counts is 15. 16 is considered infinite. So when we talked about poison reverse before, if you're using RIP, poison reverse for them is 16. So if I told John, hey, if you want to get to my house, you have to go through 16 stops, he's going to go, that's too many, I give up. And you just won't do it. But if I told him 15, you go, oh, I can get there eventually. Uh, <laughs> And so if I told him, hey, there's a better way to get there, you only have to take three stops, he would do that first, right? And that's what RIP does. So here we have our three different routers, the hearts, the spades, and the clubs. And you can see them all connected together. And the metric that we're going to use here is each one is connected by one. Now, if I wanted to go from hearts to spade, I would go this direction, not this direction. And I'd go straight to it because that would only be one hop. But in reality, it would actually be faster for me to go from hearts to clubs and then over to spades because this is using fast Ethernet over here, whereas this was using just regular Ethernet. So this was a 10 megabit per second connection. This was a 100 megabit per second connection. Which should I use? If I go at 100 by 2, I'm still going to be faster than taking 10 through 1. But RIP doesn't account for speed. It only does it based on hop count. So if we're using a RIP protocol, we're going to go from hearts to spades. We're going to go direct each time. And because of that, uh, a new protocol was invented that actually accounted for the link speeds as well. And that one is what we do, what's called link state. It requires all of your routers to understand the paths that all the other routers take to get in a network. So we're not counting the hops anymore, we're counting the speed. So in this example, I wouldn't go from A to B because that's 128 kilobits per second. But if I go A, C, D to B, as I'm showing with the arrows, you're going at 100 megabits per second. So you're going significantly faster, about 80 times faster, in fact. Um, <clears throat> this information is going to be flooded throughout the link state domain, whether that's OSPF or ISIS, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, to ensure the routers have synchronized information. This also provides us with faster convergence time. It's going to use what we call cost or other factors as a metric, and usually this is based on the link state of it or the speed of the connections. Each router is still going to construct its own shortest path tree, a relative shortest path tree, with itself as root for all known routes. So A is going to go, hey, if I want to get to B, the fastest way is to do it A, C, D, B. Uh, B might go, if I want to get to A, the fastest way is B, D, C, A. If C wants to get to A, it's going to go C to A directly. If C wants to get to B, it's going to go C, D, B. And it's going to figure this out based on the link states of what it understands. So open shortest path 
Open shortest path first is our first link state protocol we're going to talk about. It uses what they call cost, and this cost is determined based on the link speed between two routers. So in this example here, we have the cost shown as 10 between hearts and spades, one between hearts and clubs, and one between spades and clubs here at the bottom. And so if I'm at hearts and I want to get down to spades, using cost, I would go one plus one is two, two is less than 10, therefore I'm gonna go this direction all day long because it's gonna be faster. And that's based on the fact that these are fast ethernet connections, whereas the other one was a regular cat three ethernet connection. And so based on the speed, it's faster to take two fast ethernet connections than it is to take one ethernet connection. And OSPF accounts for that, where RIP did not. ISIS stands for Intermediate System to Intermediate System. This is another interior gateway protocol it also uses link state using cost, and the cost is still calculated based on link speed between two routers. It functions a lot like OSPF does. It wasn't as popular or widely used as OSPF though, so most people are still using OSPF. Then there was the Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, EIGRP. And this is another interior gateway protocol, as you can tell by the name. Uh, it was an advanced disk distance vectoring protocol that uses bandwidth and the delay, making it a hybrid of a distance vector and a link state. So they kind of took some features from RIP and they took some features from OSPF and put them together uh, to get you EIGRP. This is a proprietary Cisco protocol, so it's popular in Cisco only networks, but if you're using a network that has a mixture or hybrid, uh, or you're not using Cisco devices at all, you're not gonna be able to use this. Um, if you're using a hybrid network, you can because Cisco devices can translate for you. Uh, but if you have a lot of non-Cisco gear, people tend to stay away from this because non-Cisco gear doesn't understand enhanced, gateway, uh, in, enhanced interior gateway routing protocol. And instead, they'll just use OSPF. Border gateway protocol, or BGP, is an external gateway protocol, and it does what's called a path vector using the number of autonomous system hops it's using instead of router hops. So you can think about this like RIP, but for big outside networks. This is what runs the backbone of the, of the Internet. It's widespread in use, and it does all of this. The big problem you have with BGP, though, because you have to change these entire routing tables every time, is they don't converge very quickly. So if I go ahead and put a new router on the Internet, it's going to take a while before everyone on the Internet knows that I'm there, right? It's going to take a while. So convergence is a problem there. Um, it is the only exterior gateway protocol that we talk about on the Network Plus exam. Okay? There are other ones that exist, but this one is by far the most widespread and the one that is used all the time in the Internet and that's why it's covered by the Network Plus exam. So if you get a question of, is this an interior exterior protocol? If it's not BGP, it's interior. If it's BGP, it's exterior. Easy way to remember it. So routing advertisement methods. So another characteristic of the routing protocol is how it receives, advertises, and stores routing information. And like we said, this can be either distance vector, number of hops, or link state based on speed, bandwidth, and delay. Not every routing protocol fits nice and easily into one of these two categories. Like we said, the EIGRP, which was a Cisco protocol, combined both of them, right? It had distance and link, whereas OSPF was just link and RIP was just distance. So one of the metrics we look at is what's called the believability of a route, and that is measured by our administrative distance. So if I directly connect a route to a router, it can trust that implicitly, right? It understands that that route is there because it's connected to it. And if that route goes down, it's going to know it because it's connected directly to it. So we assign that an administrative distance of zero. If we statically configure it, meaning you as the administrator put the route in, it's going to assign that as one, okay? That is the next highest believability. The lower number is more believable. So if it's directly connected to it, it's going to trust that over what you told it. But if you told it something, it's going to trust that over everything else besides a directly connected route. EIGRP, because it is an advanced link state uh, protocol, it has a, a administrative distance of 90. OSPF has 110. It's fairly believable. It's, it's pretty good. Um, RIP is a little bit less believable because it's all based on hop count and not based on uh, link state. And so it's at 120. Uh, external EIGRP, uh, which is an external protocol, is 170. And then if it is unbelievable or unknown, it would be 255, which is the maximum because it uses an 8-bit number for this. So if your network is using more than one routing protocol, it uses this administrative distance to choose which one it's going to go first. So if I'm using RIP and OSPF and they don't agree on how to get to a particular network, 
OSPF's going to win. If you have a statically configured route and you're using RIP and OSPF, your statically configured route's going to win every time. Okay? The only thing that will beat your statically configured route is a directly connected route, which is why you want to be careful when using static routes. Because if you have a static route put in and the router you tell it to go through goes down, it's still going to try sending things to that router that's down. Whereas if you were using OSPF, it would understand that route went down and find an alternate route. Some routing protocols are considered more believable than others, like we said. The lower the number of the administrative distance, the more believable it is. Okay? And if a route has the lower, uh, distance, the lower administrative distance, like I said, it's going to be more believable, so keep that in mind. So metrics. If a routing protocol has multiple paths to reach the network, how does it choose its best path? Like we said, it's going to be based off that administrative distance, these metrics that we use. Lower metrics are better than higher metrics. So if I'm using OSPF as I am in this diagram here, um, I'm going to choose the path that has 1s versus the path that has 10. And that was based on our link state. Um, metrics are calculated differently for different protocols. If you're using RIP or OSPF or EIGRP or BGP, they're going to use either hop count, bandwidth, reliability, delay, or other metrics. For the exam, what you really want to remember is RIP uses the hop counts. OSPF uses the, the uh, link state, the bandwidth. And so in summary, I have a little chart here for you to summarize. Uh, we have our RIP, our OSPF, EIGRP, ISIS, and BGP. Uh, we have our type, whether they're distance or link state. And we have whether they're interior or exterior. And again, they're all interior with the exception of BGP. Remember that your network can support more than one routing protocol through route redistribution. So if you have a router, like a Cisco router, that's running EIGRP and your rest of your network's using OSPF, that Cisco router can actually translate the EIGRP and send it out as OSPF for other routers to use. So you can have hybrid networks that way. They can translate from one protocol to another and redistribute it out. And that is the basics of our routing protocols.